Alright. Everything is set, everything is recording. What's up on my dragonlings? I am the Dragon God of Gaming, Damian Dragon, and welcome back to uh Doki Doki a brand new day. We are back here. We're gonna be having a lot of fun. Excuse me for a minute. I'm just making sure everything is recording. And I have my I have a, my girlfriend messaging me. She's worried about my freaking ferrets. <laughs> like, seriously? <laughs> anyway. Welcome back to Doki Doki, a brand new day. This is going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to be stopping from time to time just to answer some messages because it's late at night and actually some people do message me at this time. So, shit. So, anyway. Let's go on. I patiently wait by Sayori's house. It's been over 45 minutes. Of course. Women. <laughs> Should I just wait or go in? This is... This, I'm going to pick what I usually would do. I'll just go in. I'm done waiting. Something is wrong. I clearly remember that she said yesterday. At least you won't have to worry about me when I'm gone. What the hell does she mean by that? It doesn't sound right. No! Please don't tell me that she died! Oh no! I run to, run to Sayori's house. I knock on the door. There is no answer. I check the front door and to my luck, it's unlocked. You will never find my house unlocked. Ever. Like the one thing that you'll never find at my house. My door is unlocked. <sighs> but yeah, no, you won't find my house unlocked ever. So, Sarah, I'm coming in and hope you're decent. Oh no! Please don't tell me I have to censor some things. Oh boy. If she isn't, oh well, that doesn't matter. Dude! You're going inside a girl's house. Bro, at least make sure she is, she's set, you know? That's like the one courtesy you could at least have. Make sure she's at least has a shirt on and some, and some shorts on before you barge into her room. Like, for real, man. I run upstairs to go immediately to her bedroom. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. That's actually a good touch. Just a knock. Sayori, are you up? There's no response. Oh boy. Oh no. Screw privacy. I'm too worried. I'm going in. Screw privacy. Dude. This lady. Screw privacy, I'm going in. That's that's fucked up. Don't don't clear someone's privacy just to do that. I just open the door. Sigori. Oh wait, I remember this. Oh. Oh, she's sleeping. Oh, she's still sleeping. Oh. Whoo. <laughs> she's still asleep. I heard her gently snoring. <laughs> A gentle snoring. Just knowing that puts me at ease. Thank goodness. I breathe a sigh of relief. I start to walk to her bed to wake her up, but I notice one, notice one of her desk drawers is slightly open. I'm shocked at what I find. A makeshift noose. You actually find the noose. What the hell is Sayori doing with the noose? She's been having a hard time waking up in the morning, been complaining about other things too. What the hell is wrong with me? Why didn't I notice this sooner? I quickly pocket the noose from the drawer. Not, to, not today, death. Not today. <laughs> I prevented Sayori's death. Is that what that means? I prevented Sayori's death. Yay! <laughs> Damien! Ah, what are you doing here? <laughs> I would be asking the same question. My friend has done this to me before. They have one a, a girl that used to go to my school. Her name, I'm, I'm not going to mention her name. I'm just going to call her uh, Tish. But she came to my house... And she had w had to wake me up, and I jumped a fucking mile. <laughs> Holy fuck. And don't worry, that's not her real name. 
I was worried about you. I've been waiting in front of your house all morning. You never came out, so I came inside to check and see if you were all right. Sorry, Sarah gets out of bed. I sit down in her room. Sari forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that something's wrong. I'm sorry that I'm preoccupied with other things. My bad. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Uh, I guess you're right. It has been a long time. Well, when you haven't come to a friend's house in a long time, then that's... Uh, not much has really changed, has it? Sarah's room is all, as messy as it's always been. <laughs> the same pile she likes putting things in. I always have like a weird feeling that I'm being watched and it, and it sucks. I don't know. I don't know why. She th likes putting things in. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had for years now. Really? Like, I like to change up my room as much as I can. Like, I'll be putting different things around. So, I like to decorate, like, but I don't no normally have time, so, hey. <laughs> if you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. You know what? You're right. How's about every day I come over every morning help you out? What are best friends for, right? Eh? I grab Sorry by the shoulder and give her a big hug. I should have realized you were hugging all this time. Me, your best friend. I'm such a big dummy. What a word! <laughs> I'm such a big dummy. I'm sorry, Sari. I've caused you pain all this time without knowing it. That ends now. I hold in my tears. Oh. No, it's not supposed to be like this. I'm not. It's not supposed to be this way. I'm not supposed to be happy. But your hug feels so warm. I'm so scared. <laughs> Wait. Is she, yeah, she's supposed to die here. She's supposed to die on the third day, is right? Oh fuck, I prevented it. Yes. Sarah lets me go. You are not alone now. I'll make I'll help you and make sure you do get good help. Let me help you, alright? Sarah shakes her head in agreement. We pause and stare at one another again. I'll give you privacy so you can get ready. I'll head downstairs and whip you up some breakfast, okay? What? You can cook? <laughs> Actually, in real life, I can cook. So that's a good thing. You'd be surprised from the, the things I've learned. Okay, one thing is that if you have a girlfriend, at least give her some privacy so she can do that. Like, if she gives you permission to, like, be in the room while she gets dressed, that's on you. But this, my character's being a good thing because this girl has not given him no permission whatsoever to sit in the room while she gets dressed. So... Yeah. <laughs> like, that's why I always like to get permission. If if a girl is getting dressed around or near my house and I have to get something, I always get permission if I can, you know, see things. <laughs> why did this turn into something very fucked up and weird? Let me continue going be before I get more death threats. Because that's a, that was a thing. I quickly make some make Sayori some breakfast with what is left in her fridge and head outside. I'm ready. Okay, let's go. And Sayori a breakfast sandwich I made for her. This tastes too good for me to admit. <laughs> what did I tell you? We both run to school. Sayori devours the sandwich in tow. We climb the gates and stealthily get into class. Wow, club time again! Yay! Crap! I forgot to write a poem. Hey, Damien. Oh no, not again. Hope you got one of those poems for me, Damien. Uh, yeah, about that. No poems, no cupcakes. Got it? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> cupcakes, my only weakness. No! One more thing. Thanks for not leaving Sayori hanging. Boom ching <laughs> That is... I'm sorry, but this is the most horrible pun I've ever seen. Thanks for not leaving Sayori hanging. Boom ching they just need the. They just need that in the background of this. Ba-dum-ching. <laughs> Monica winks and walks away. What? What did she just say? Monica sits down at a desk by the back door of the classroom. Hi, Damien. 
Yo, Zeri! <laughs> Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. Well, don't worry about it. I'm here to stay. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh? That's not like you at all. I forgot to bring much money with me today. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? <laughs> Why'd that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. <laughs> Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. Does she have like a $20 bill in her freaking um, purse? She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. I knew it. That's not fair. How did you even know? If you had enough money in the first place, you would have brought a snack before coming to the club room. But there's one more thing I know about you, Sayori. You're always hungry. <laughs> and so, that only leaves me, leaves the one option. Ah, <laughs> I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. Sayori. <laughs> When someone gets caught red-handed in the middle of class, it is the funniest thing in the world to anybody who's sitting around that's not them. And I used to laugh my ass off when people got caught red-handed about something. And I would start dying in the background. <laughs> it would normally be one of my friends that gets themselves caught. Either by their girlfriend, one of their friends, or by the teacher themselves. And it was fucking hysterical. Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh, I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face in, is in her book as always. Ah, I wasn't listening or anything. Well, of course she was. <laughs> it was just something in my book. Yuri! <laughs> Tell David to let me borrow some money. Guilt trip him, guilt trip him for me, okay? That's... Don't get me involved like that, Yuri. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous, mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Uh, did I just... I didn't mean all that. I get too absorbed into my books. Uh. <laughs> and when someone gets embarrassed, it's again the most funniest thing you would ever see during the day. <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. <laughs> That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That. Is still coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but, you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. If I had to trick Natsuki into making them. You're damn right about that. Cupcakes are life. <laughs> Indeed they are. Cupcakes are life. Cupcakes is love. Cupcakes is life. And I very much agree. <laughs> I want to get myself some cupcakes tomorrow. <laughs> oh my god. Stop by GameStop first. Note that tomorrow I got to pay off the rest of WWE 2K19. Or put at least a little bit money, more money down on it. So I'm going to have to go to GameStop. Which is a three mile walk. My legs are going to be tired. Ugh. <laughs> <Pwah>. <laughs> she got smacked. <laughs> I know it's how they smacks her in the face. Tumbles onto the desk. Ow. What was? Eh? A cookie. <laughs> Why did I wait so long to play this again? This is this fucking hysterical. Oh, a cookie! <laughs> I used to love the cookies that they used to sell at my school. It was... Delicious. Oh! The cookies were like $3, and they were the best thing in the fucking cafeteria. Besides the lunch ladies actually giving you pizza on that day. Which was... Oh. Pizza at our school was fucking fun. Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. So he glances around. I is this a miracle? It's because I paid my ret restitution? Retribution! <laughs> Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you. 
But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's not. That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Harry hugs a cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Terry rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. Show good. <laughs> cookie! Mmm. Harry suddenly claps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> You're going, you're going through a lot over just one cookie. Nookie takes a bite of her own cookie. And yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Oh, can I try it? Jeez, beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. So I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. Which one was hers? Fucking uh, oatmeal, oatmeal cookie? Because I like the oatmeal cookies. Peanut butter oatmeal cookie. Mmm. <laughs> so it gets out of her seeing and goes behind that cookie, then wraps her arms around her. Aw, oh, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in hand. Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Mm. Her suddenly leans down and takes a bite of Natsuki cookie. <laughs> hey! Did you see she just do that? <laughs> mm hmm. I'll fall trust away to safety. <laughs> The crow strikes again. <laughs> My cookie. <laughs> I'm physically dying. <laughs> I'm physically dying at this game. Oh my god. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Fences around. Monica's in the club room. Uh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Um, she was just here. I was just talking to her. Didn't you guys see her? I glanced around the room. She's gone. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. Hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh, you don't think she has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than any, uh, than all of us combined. Well, damn. What a soul, like, little self-image of, your, of yourselves. That's kind of messed up. Eh, that's true. What are you saying? You're all incredibly breathtaking, in my opinion. <laughs> the face change. <laughs> and then Yuri figures it out. <laughs> When everyone else gets it, but you're the last one to figure it out. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, uh, there you are. Why did you leave? They didn't mean to be late. Hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Uh, Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. What are you guys saying? She was literally just here. B boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. I wink. Por qué? Don't worry about it. <laughs> <sighs> Always late night messages. <sighs> Sorry about that. I had to name my freaking ferrets for this girl. <laughs> don't worry about it. What happened anyway? And don't think I'm shrugging off my girlfriend because I'm not. I just do get into my videos and sometimes when I do a video, I like to shut off my stuff sometimes. That's why this is not ringing off the fucking hook because it's not on. But then my iPad was just on. So, yeah. I hate when I have to stop and text in the middle of recording. But I only get to talk to her during the day. 
and uh, sometimes at night because she works most of the day. So I'd rather. What happened anyway? Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> I'm so damn confused right now. <laughs> Everyone is. That makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. Must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't really. I kind of just studied recently. I've, I'll, I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. I look back and smile. <laughs> Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds great. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? Of course. In that case, I won't let you down, Ian. Don't let any of us down, okay, Monica? I smile I smile wildly at Monica. She knows something I don't. <laughs> she knows something, my character knows something. Are they referencing back to the original game? No pressure, alright? <laughs> don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I don't mess. Um, so I don't miss anything. So I didn't miss anything, did I? Not real. Not not really. I chose to leave out Sarah's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sari somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Yuri starts charging toward me. Oh God. Yuri. Hey Yuri. What's new? Uh. Uh. I suddenly noticed that Yuri is reading a different book from the one we've been reading together. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, no. I was kind I was kind of just waiting for you. Ah, uh, if that's the case, why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. I actually have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. Well, isn't that what a water pitcher is? Something with a filter inside? Do you know this for a second? Sure. Your hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk and I'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down at the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Okay, may I have a water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. I might as well walk with you. Th that's okay. You stay here. I won't take long. Pitcher in hand, Yuri hurries out the classroom. Uh, did Yuri leave you again? What do you mean, again? She's just filling up the water pitcher to make tea. Oh, okay. You might want to check, but that's just me. She's getting me to go check on Yuri. She cuts herself here. Yuri said it wouldn't take long. What's holding her up? Is she squeezing her own water? That was a really weird joke. Please don't make that again. I'm worried. I decided to go out look for her. This is where I find that she's cutting herself. Let's see. The most logical place for Yuri to be would be the nearest water fountain. I start heading down the hallway. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> I know this part. <laughs> Oh no. What's that noise? It's coming from around the corner. It sounds like some heavy breathing. It sounds naughty. Dude. Bro. Yeah. A sharp inhale like someone is sucking the air through their teeth. Are they in pain? I wish the corner would appear around it. Yuri? Oh no, her arm. <laughs> Punching me in the face with her face. Holy fuck. Uh, I black out. We're back in the classroom on a desk seat quite floppily. What the hell just happened? You got knocked out by a girl. Holy fuck. She just Mike Tyson your ass. When someone's in pain, they, that, oh, I, I, I don't even know what to say. She just Mike Tyson me. Yuri Mike Tyson me. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> that was a one hit KO. Was I just one-shotted by a girl? Worse yet, were those cuts on her hand arm? They seem very deep. 
<clears throat> Need they were. Hold on. I tried to speak to Yuri, but she's ignoring me right now. I guess I'll see who else I can talk to. Here, for right now, I I'm, I'm gonna save it here. And I'll be right back in one second. So, be right back. Alright. Hey guys, what's up? Um, we're back here. Um, if you guys are wondering why it took so long, well, it's because... <laughs> I need to move some files and um, actually had a little bit of an issue but it's hours and hours later because I tried to get this to work again and it did not so I'm glad that it's working now of all play of all times so anyway we're gonna go on here I believe yep okay I'll go to speak to Natsuki I think Hey, Natsuki! Oh, look at her little cheeks. She's not asleep. I want to pinch her cheeks, but resist the urge to do so. Oh, God. Well, isn't that a thing? <laughs> I think it would be a bad idea to bother her. I'll talk to her later. Yeah, well, the lady's sleeping. <laughs> Let the lady sleep. Man, it looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slumped down into the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me, but I'd rather read it together with her. Sucks she's ignoring me right now. Yeah, after she punched you in the face and knocked you out. Cause that was a one-two punch and a half. I close my eyes and end up listening in on Sayori's conversation with Monica. We're probably going to seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is that the idea of, lit of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know? We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Oh, and by the way, I know I don't have a face cam right now because I'm using XSplit to uh, do the rest of this. But when I was actually recording this the first time, I was using OBS. So, <laughs> sorry for the little change. I had, I'm, oh, not, not OBS. XSplit has an issue with bringing up my face cam. And I am not going to fiddle with it for another couple hours while I wait to figure out exactly how the f to fucking end this. So, <laughs> and not, I'm not that I actually want to end this, but... It's to the point where I, it's been hours, so yeah. We need to we need a way that showing everyone that something that speaks to their creative minds. Hmm, that doesn't sound solve the problem though. Eh, what do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in the first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place. You know, after they come, we can do the thing to speak to their creative mind. What's this? Sayori's talking and taking talking this. Taking this really seriously. It's rare to hear her deliberating like this. Huh, that's a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? What kind? Uh well I guess we could cupcakes! <laughs> oh Did she just say cupcake? A woman after <laughs> a woman of my own heart. <laughs> oh my god, um Cupcakes do sound delicious, though. Holy fuck. <laughs> Alright. Ah, <laughs> good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. Ah, uh, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. <laughs> it does to mine, too. Cupcake it is then. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> oh, she speaks to my own heart. I love it. <laughs> Me too. Maybe I should invite Sayori for dinner tonight. Ooh. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. So, is Sayori coming over for dinner? I find myself smiling evilly. In the end, Sayori is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, 
but I feel it. I change. I feel it changing a bit. So you can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I'm just thinking like the contrast between my my first uh, entry of the video and my and, and this one. <coughs> if you hear a uh, sound difference, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it's hours later and I've actually slept already <laughs> so yes I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes why <laughs> I want my to find Sarah's feeling face filling my vision I nearly fall out of my chair <laughs> that's this has actually happened to me before um I was sleeping in class I really shouldn't have been. Um, I was sleeping in my fourth period class, and my fourth period class would be after I had gotten back from off-campus hours, which I really wasn't supposed to be in anyway. But I had to sit there, and um, I had to sit there for hours, and we don't do nothing out off the after the hours so I sit there and I usually just um, lay back and fall asleep which again I shouldn't have been and my teacher wanted wanted me for something so apparently she asked my friend to come and wake me up so this dude did the, the weirdest fucking thing in the world he shook me and he sat there like inches from my head and <laughs> not inches from my head but you know I was sitting in like one of those desk chair hybrids where the desk is, you know, outstretched and uh, there's a little guardrail, but the chair I was sitting in did not have a guardrail. So I, when he woke me up, I saw him, I jumped and I flipped out of my chair <laughs> to the ground and I'm like, don't ever do that shit again. <laughs> my, my teacher was like, Damien, I needed you. I'm like, ah. Uh. I'm coming. <laughs> it's like, why are you sleeping anyway? Because there's nothing else to do. <laughs> and I'm tired. Because that was actually one of the days. Actually, no, that was a couple days after I did uh, the angriest video ever from FNAF uh, 3. <laughs> that was actually one of those days. <laughs> a couple days afterwards. So. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. No, you're not sorry. <laughs> Wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. Told you. <laughs> it's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't the napping club. Does our school have a napping club? Can I join that too? <laughs> that would be amazing. You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in the club, you're going to have less time for anime, you know. You'll need to get used to it. Anything you say, princess. I glanced over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. Princess? Yeah. Yeah. You're always looking out for me, Sari. Thank you for that. <laughs> it's what I do best. That's a problem, though. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Eh, n not every day. That's not very convincing. <laughs> How many days this back week have you gotten up on time? That's... It's a secret. I knew it. <laughs> I didn't wake up. I didn't wake up on time for school a lot either, <laughs> and therein lies the problem. <laughs> I was a uh, honor student in in high school, but the thing is that when I stayed up late late at night, I did not get up for school in the morning. <laughs> but what I would do because I was a independent student is that. I would literally get up, no matter what time it was, I would get up, get on the bus, go to school, but if I wasn't feeling it that day, I would go to school, go to my first period class, and then leave. Now before you guys ask me, like, you cannot just leave a school campus. And you're right. But the thing was, I was able to sign myself out of school. <laughs> Which was actually the funnest thing, because they could, I was... 18 years old going on 19 and uh, they couldn't tell me exactly what to do 
So it's like everyone else is under my age. So I'm like, so they had they give me a creative freedom because they knew I wasn't gonna um, fuck with it. The first time I actually left school was actually in October when uh, 2K17 uh, came out. WWE 2K17 came out, and um, I went to get that. <laughs> so I left school at 8 a.m. <laughs> to get to to get to uh, GameStop at around nine and uh, pick up the game. Actually, to pay off the rest of the game, I went home right after that. Five days later, I did the same thing and got, and got the game. <laughs> so, yeah. That was actually funny. <laughs> well, it's my turn to help you, Sayori. I need to do this for you. You are clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all around here. Eh. I run my fingertips down the side of Sarah's hair, trying to straighten it out. Dog. Man, you really need to brush this. Yeah, she really does. But I can't complain, my hair is a fucking mess all the time too. Her hair feels quite nice. My hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. It's never straight. <laughs> And there's a, tooth, there's a toothpaste stain on your collar right here. I wet my finger and try to wipe off the stain. But, but nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's going to tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. But I do care about you. Hey, you meanie. <laughs> it's mean, but it's true. Sorry. Hey, you meanie. <laughs> you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Eh? That's super mean. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I set the button uh, um, button her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. Dude. The look. Oh, uh, I was about to say, really? What is up with the shoes? Hold on. Just making sure I'm recording. I get that sometimes. But look at her fucking shoes and shit. Like, I thought those were just shoes wearing socks. I'm like, where the fuck is your shoes? And I realized, oh, wait, that is her shoes. So those were like the button, the um, hard tip shoes and shit that girls wear. <laughs> this is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these thing kind of things. Eh? Don't say that. It isn't weird. It's what caring friends should do. Help one another. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Yes. Yes, I am. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I still get fully close the button near her chest. Dude! <laughs> Does this thing even fit you properly? <laughs> it did when I bought it. <laughs> I could never admit that my clothes don't fit me no more. <laughs> Even if, I, especially if I like wear it a lot. Why do I keep hitting that? <sighs> if you ever buttoned it up, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you? What are you smiling about? It means my boobs got bigger again. Oops, should have noticed that sooner. Well, it's a good thing you didn't notice that sooner because why are you looking at her chest to begin with? Her eyes is up above, not below. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you look much better now, so... Ah, uh, why does it feel strange to see Siri's blazer buttoned up like that? But it's so stuffy! Ugh, it's not worth it at all! Siri hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Phew, that's so much better. 
So he puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. And you take care of me better than anyone else would, anyway. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. That doesn't mean I can't. Um, that doesn't mean I can't be your boyfriend, you know. Eh. Jeez. <laughs> that is the most smoothest thing a guy could ever say to a girl. <laughs> when you're talking about a, a boyfriend or something, that doesn't mean I can't be your boyfriend, you know, right? But her face is supposed to change. She does not like you like that. Then. <laughs> well, anyway. I'll help you make sure I'll help you make sure you wake up earlier. There's supposed to be a like a you right here. <laughs> Only focus on getting to bed earlier. It's a deal. <laughs> I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so, huh? So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. I already said I would. Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> Man, it's impossible to tell you with you sometimes. Okay everyone. Eh, Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! Damien, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I feel it sound enthusiastic, but Sarah still tries to wait to retrieve her poem. I quickly write a poem on a piece of paper as I forgot to write one last night. The shadow tears within my heart. I've always known it from the start. This part of madness will start to show because look out trouble, here I go. That's actually a really good one. I don't want to share his poems with one another. We still have some free time. So he runs up to me. Damien, Damien. I'm going to go get some supplies from another classroom. Want to come with me? Supplies? What for? Well, you know how the festival is coming up. Me and Monica were going to make some posters and stuff. So I need to go find some crayons and markers and glue sticks. Sure, I'll go with you. Let me help. Yay! Okay, Monica, we'll be back soon. Don't worry about us, all right? Ah, are you going with Damien to get the supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'd be happy to go with him. Aw, but I wanted to go. It's so much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. She really wants to be alone with me. It was just a suggestion. See if you can find poster paper too, okay? Don't worry, Monica. I, won't, I want to have some time with you too. Are you sure? I'm kind of surprised you're talking to me right now. Why so? Why don't we talk tomorrow then? Yes, let's do, Damien. Then it's pr it's a promise, okay? Sure thing, Monica. Won't break my promise. Okay, ready, Damien? Yep, let's go. So I'm, I'm going to have a conversation the next time with Monica. Sarah and I exit the classroom. I fall behind as Sayori hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, it feels like I'm taking a kid to the mall or something, but... I find it enjoyable. Yep. When someone acts like a kid, it's one of the most funnest things in the world. The funnest things in the world. Because it's just so much fun just to see someone have so much fun with something so simple. So he finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Case in point. Hey, Sayori. What exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. <laughs> Me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yep, we're going to do a poetry performance. A performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone is going to take turns on stage and recite their favorite poems. Ah, that sounds kind of dull, maybe. Damien, you're not thinking about it the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems. It's about performing them. Like you say the lines of the poem like, Between my feet, the last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots. Pressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to what ends have I summoned this joy? For now, when I look in every direction, the once prosperous field before me is but a barren wasteland. Like that. She's really good at that. Siri, how do I put this? <laughs> I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Eh, you meanie. I'm working super hard on this, you know. I know, I know. I just meant that it's pretty unordinary contrast to your cute self. Uh, don't say that. It's embarrassing. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. Huh, I'm so excited. 
The festival is going to be so much fun. Is it? Sorry spins herself around in the hallway again. Hey, Damien, this, this classroom over here is empty. Let's begin the mission. The mission, eh? It's been a long time since I've spent time with Sari like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine drawing happy vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As years went by, I began to hold myself up in my room more and more. So going adventuring with Siri brings back um, brings about a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. But I know inside something is wrong with her. Yeah, she tried to fucking hang herself. I wonder why. The two of us enter the classroom. Sari heads straight to the closet, and I follow. Let's see what we have in here. Crayons. Sari pulls a box of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand too. They're kind of dirty though. Sari so starts pulling various crayons out of the box and reading the color names. I don't know why people do that. Alright, that's one down. Don't get distracted. We still need to find... Wait, I'm looking for my favorite color. Fine, fine. And at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. I dropped one by accident. Ooh! That was a loud block. Yeah. <laughs> Siri bends over and smacks her forehead right into the shelf. I've done that before. She falls to the floor and the crayons spill all over her lap. Ow, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> you okay? My forehead. Sari clutches the forehead. Jeez, Sayori, are you okay? Come on, let me see. As Sayori is sitting on the floor, I grab her gently by the wrist and pull her out of the closet. You have to move your hand, Sayori. But it hurts. Just do it for a second. Dude, what's with the compromising positions, man? Really? Sayori slowly releases her hand from her forehead. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Why Why did I never notice how cute she, was, she is? What the hell? Ow. Sorry. There's a huge red mark on the center of her forehead. A bump is starting to form as well. Man, that's gonna swell up. I should find some use some ice. Hey man, where would I even find ice around this time? Well, I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> Even when they from the pain theory it makes a silly joke. That is weird. <laughs> what are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? Okay. I pass her in the shoulder and run out onto the hallway like Usain Bolt. Vroom! <laughs> <clears throat> That's fast as fucking lightning. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? It doesn't really matter since it will be used as an ice pack rather than a drink. But I know Sarah likes apple juice, so I purchased that one. And just a moment, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Sayori. She has one palm on her forehead and is using the other hand to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. At least they were already in the wrong spots before I spilled them. Don't worry about that, Sayori, here. What's with this container? That does not look like any apple juice container I have ever seen. That looks like a fucking bottle of beer. Hand Sayori the bottle of apple juice. It's a nice, it's nice and cold. Sarah opens the cap and starts drinking from it. <laughs> Terry, what are you doing? It's for your forehead. Or did the bump make you forget? <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> you must have bumped it pretty hard then. So I places the bottle against the bump on her forehead, on her head. It stings. Just bear with it. It'll feel, it'll feel better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. Hey, Damien. This kind of reminds you of growing up, doesn't it? Eh, what do you mean? You know how we used to play outside all the time? I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some kind of, in some ways. Like I usually fell behind or had trouble climbing on things you did. But sometimes when I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and straight myself or get a bump. And I would start crying really hard. <laughs> you would rush over as quick as you could. You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Well, that's part of the reason, because I know I've done it before. <laughs> you know, it really wasn't your fault at all, you know? But that, for me, that was my fault. <laughs> Did it really do that? Yeah, you don't remember? Don't think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always so focused on my games that I didn't pay enough attention to you. So in a way, it was my fault. Kind of like this time, too. If I wasn't rushing you out the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. Hey man, I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years. You're rushing to help me, even though I'm just being clumsy. 
You're really a sweetheart. Thanks. I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. Don't. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you've been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right. Damien, I'm so glad that there's nothing changed between us. You think it'll be like this forever? Forever? If I'm honest to myself, I don't want it to just say like this. I want it to go further. You know what? The only thing I can imagine is it changing for the better, Sayori. You've been my best friend for since long I can remember. Nothing will ever change that. I'm so happy. Sayori has a whimsical expression in her eyes. He remained silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me want to squeeze her cheeks. I guess we should get back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know. Monica can wait. You know she's gonna see your forehead in either way. Not if I had it under my bangs. So he hops to her feet. Ah! <laughs> yeah, never get up very quickly from anything. Any any bump at all. She goes to her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. Ooh. Well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. I follow Sarah at the classroom. Sarah plays with her bangs to try to hide the bump, but without much success. I hold Sarah's hand and walk her back to the classroom. And a moment we make it back to the classroom club room. Ah, uh, you're back. Uh, Sayori, your forehead? She's fine, don't worry about. I was playing with crayons and smacked my forehead into the shelf. <laughs> she has nothing to say to that. That was so stupid that she even has nothing to say. Well, anyway. <laughs> let me move forward. <laughs> Were you able to find everything we needed? Uh-huh, we have it right. Uh, Sayori frantically glanced around herself. I forgot all of the stuff. Calm down, Sayori. I have it all right here. I found the post paper, too. Ah. Sounds like you ended up doing all the work, Damien. Ah, oh, well, Sayori was her, so I wanted to help her out. I made it an adventure. <laughs> uh, when stupid people need to need to uh, calm the nerves. I made it an adventure. Yes, you sure did. <laughs> okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too. Okay, everyone, let's gather around. After making sure the crayon box is closed tightly, I return to my seat. Okay, everyone, oddly enough, today we've ha had more time than usual to get things done. So, because of that, I have something extra planned today. So, if everyone could come and sit at the front of the room. This is about the festival. Well, sort of. Uh, do we really need to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put in together anything good in a few days. Wow, that's fucked up. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do with last minute pres do well with last minute preparations. Neither do I. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sarah has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? <laughs> Face dropped. <laughs> um, Monica. Yeah, we're going to be doing a poetry. Going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. The cool part is we're going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sarah's so putting it on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sarah, who's been color? Sorry, who's been coloring your poster and holds it up for us to see? Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting these post posters up, did you? Well, that was fast. Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's a bad, a bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagine it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Uh, anytime I have to do my schoolwork, I, I, I used to do that too. No, 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 <laughs> Guys, I'll do it. Why not? Right? They clearly ignore me speaking. No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri never shared their poems with anyone uh, until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room, of full, mm, room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. Mm, but... I still think we should give it our best. Best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. 
If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah, it's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share with that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. Sure. And if it takes standing in front of a room of standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Deject it. <laughs> That's when you remain silent. Sherry looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree 100%. I don't think it's too much to ask at all. I think that Sierra and Monica have been putting, tr been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out in a, a little bit, and it's the least I should do anyway. Well, maybe, but it looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll, I'll just have to get it over with. All right, phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glanced around at everyone else's expressive faces. Uh, I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. The skull says it's gonna be the death of me. <laughs> oh, that's actually pretty funny. Not if I can help it. Oh, gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No way. Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel more comfortable. Can I go next? Uh, of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to find into the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites in bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? Oh, believe me, she's done it before. <laughs> I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sherry looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Like the evil look. Finally, Monica finishes her recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath, um, takes a breath and smiles. That that was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. That was great. I'm at a loss for words. Are you ready to go next, Yuri? I I'll go next. Yuri! Aw, <laughs> uh, Yuri's firing up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This one was called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It it's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? I believe that she has got herself during the class. Holy shit. As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the world of whirling fire Yuri keeps and concealed inside her head. Suddenly she finishes. Everyone is stunned. Yuri steps back into reality and glances around her as if she's bewildered even up, even herself. <laughs> it's up to me to save the situation. <laughs> I'm the first one to start applauding. Holy crap, that was amazing. Holy shit, I didn't know you can do this. Oh my god. Everyone joins me afterward and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we don't didn't want to applaud her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to, into her seat. Yuri, that was good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. <laughs> okay, I guess I'm next then. He pops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meta. Ah, <laughs> sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Say already. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Uh, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best way. I see, I see. Okay then. 
Serpent begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made a, as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like the series. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sari's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sari meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sari finishes and we applaud. I did it. Great job, Sari. <laughs> Even Damien liked it. I guess that's a good sign. That's weird. <coughs> they came out nicely, same old Sari. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be the uh, that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> <laughs> the next time I'm going to make make you pick a poem that challenges you a little bit more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. I don't don't make me go before Damien. It's not like I can compare it to you guys anyway. Might as well let Damien lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki. Bitch. It's fine. It's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection to uh, what to read. I just have to go with what I wrote today. I stand in front of it and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. I feel a newfound determination inside me. I recite my poem with newfound confidence. Once I finish, I receive applause anyway, even though my poem wasn't that good. Sorry, I'm not as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, I think you're right about that. I need to practice more. Alright then, I just leave you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Nick begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you looking at me like that? Because you're performing. Sorry, I had to make sure. Because you're presenting. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, the poem was called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and a rhyme to it. It's Natsuki tra Natsuki's trademark style and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She helps back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? I liked it. It's for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Uh, well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I put on whatever face I want for other people, but when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I've been making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Yapes. I guess I gotta write something better by that time, huh? <laughs> That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm al I'm already presently surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Well, for you girls, I'll... Okay, everyone. Thanks for cutting me off. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. Oh, shit. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, I'll be pu I'll be finished planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday is a big day. Can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. How I gotta psych myself up for anything. Oh yeah. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but damn it, I'll do my best. If it's for the sake of the club, and I'm pressing all of the girls, then I'll have to do my best. I step out of the hallway for a moment. I make a quick phone call to Sayori's parents. I've never seen her parents. I tell them what happened in the morning and send them photos of the news. They are at a loss. They informed me they will take Sayori to the hospital tomorrow to get checked up. They informed me they won't be home tonight. I asked if Sayori could stay over at my place because I'm worried about her safety. They reluctantly agreed and I told them I would protect her with my life. I hang with the phone and head back to the class. So, Sayori is staying with me tonight. 
crap, I almost forgot. I safe to dispose of the news. Ready to go, Siri? Yep. Look at you two always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, guys. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? You don't. <laughs> That's how. It's okay, Damien. You don't have to say it. All these pretty girls around me, whatever I say now will get me doomed. Um, let's go home. I rock home with Sayori once more. Alright. Well, that's the end of another day of the Doki Doki Literature Club. Um, what does everyone think? And what's your favorite Doki? Because I actually do want to know about all that. I want to know exactly what your favorite Doki is. Is it Monica? Is it Sayori? Is it Yuri? Or is it Natsuki? Let me know down in the comments below and I would love to hear it. While you're down the had some food before this while you're down there hit that like button and also hit the subscribe button and that bell icon to get notified whenever i upload because anytime i come into the world you know this fun to be had there's doki to be done and you always know in the end all dokis are the best doki so don't miss out don't miss that bell and please 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 watch your head but for now thank you everyone so much for watching the video and if you guys like it please smack the like button and show who's boss and share and subscribe for the glory of the dragon so you too may become a model but from Damien and Tito Land to video games all over the world, I will see you Dragonlings in the very next episode. Peace out, my friends. Good gaming, happy hunting, and I'll see you Dragonlings back inside the world of Doki Doki Literature Club. Hope you guys enjoyed today. I will see you guys next time for some more Damien Dragon action. Peace.